Alright, so now that you've got your instruments all set up, it's time to learn how to actually use this pattern editor so that you can insert notes and actually write music with Famitracker. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on right here. You may not know what all of it does, but I'll do my best to explain it for you. As you can see, this is your main pattern editor right here. This is where you actually insert notes. To insert notes, press your spacebar or go to the record button up here and press it. This bar highlighting across all of them will turn red. And then you can now input input notes using your computer keyboard. And or you can use like a MIDI controller if you want. That's basically how you input notes. You can use your computer keyboard as a regular keyboard, just play around with it and you'll get a feel for it. So that's about it for inserting notes. Now, okay, you want you notice right here you have speed settings, tempo settings. Speed and tempo basically control how fast the song goes. Right now it's on its default setting of speed of 6, tempo 150, this is the default at 150 beats per minute. You can lower this and the song will go faster, As you can see it's now 180 beats per minute. You can lower it up to 1, now it's 900 beats per minute, that's a little too fast. Or if you go above 6, it will slow it down. It's generally best to try to keep it on the tempo of 150, because if you play around with it, um, the NES technically couldn't handle like such varied tempos like 147, 143, those would cause it to shorten some notes and lengthen others so that it could meet that. So your sound will be slightly glitched. It's hard to notice, but it is noticeable. So basically, that's about it for changing the tempo. So you can see there's 64 rows. This huge row right here that's all highlighted by the red, that's one row. And there's 64 of them going down. It's in hexadecimal, so it goes down to 3F. And you can see we have one frame here. That's one complete thing of 64 rows. So a lot of people would be like, oh, all right, so I want a longer song, so I'll increase the number of rows. That only goes up to 256, and then you're out of room. Whereupon it'll just loop back on itself. So a lot of people get stuck here. So you want to create another frame. See here, you have your frame editor. Right now you only have one frame. But if you want to continue with the song, beyond your 64 rows or however many you set it to, click this plus button right here. You now have these two frames. These are the same as you can see. As these colors match up, if the numbers match up, they're going to be playing the same thing. Like if I put a G right here, I'll scroll down, and on the second frame there's also a G. It'll copy whatever I put. So if you want to write something different on your second frame, go to this plus button right here and change it. So now you can insert whatever you want go crazy. So that's about it for the frame editor. Alright, so now you got your play button. This will loop the current frame that you're in indefinitely. Your instrument editor is located right here. Configuration file. If you go into configuration, there's a lot of stuff right here. One that always confuses people is how to set up the note cut. I always set mine up to the semicolon key. Just type it in right there. Click OK, and now you can do note cuts, which is this solid line which stops all notes. It's useful for like cutting out sound and creating stops. So let's learn how to use this actual pattern editor right here. As you can see, you have all these columns, but not quite sure what they do. If we type a G right here, you get this G200. What does that mean? Alright, so basically, the note is G, your octave is 2, and you're using instrument 00. zero. If you match it up right here, you select it right here. If you select 0, 1, do the same thing, you'll notice your note is slightly different. It's 0, 1. Now this column right here, all the way down, is your volume column. Now well, basically you can set this to anything from 0 to F. That's 0 to 15. It's in hexadecimal. So basically you can go from incredibly like muted to loud to any number in between. So, that's playing around with the volume column there. Backspace will delete notes as it goes up. If you highlight a note and press delete, it will also delete, obviously. Finally, right here, you have your effects column. Now basically there's a large number of effects, and I'll go over these in the next part of the tutorial. So I wouldn't concern yourself with them yet. So, basically, this is all there is to the pattern editor. You can delete frames by using this button. If you want to move things around, you can press down arrow, this will move this frame down. If you didn't want to do that, you're like, oh, I made a mistake, you can go back up. 
If you have something cool written in one of your frames and you want to repeat it over again, you can press right here and it'll duplicate your currently selected frame. So now you have this thing playing twice. Or you can just delete it. So, that's about it for the pattern editor. If you want to go even crazier when writing music and use an expansion chip like the VRC6 or MMC5, go to Module, Module Properties. You can see you can add songs to a playlist, and you can use these buttons up here to switch songs, or this drop down menu right here. We'll add a song, we'll be like, Hey, look, a new song. Alright, and we want to use VRC6. So press OK, you'll notice you have a whole bunch more channels. Create a VRC6 instrument, put your cursor editor in one of these three channels, and press New Instrument. So you can see it creates a new VRC6 instrument, which you can then edit, just like any other instrument. And if you want to go to your new song, simply select it from the menu. It'll be a completely new song. It'll use the same instruments. You can create new instruments for it if you want. Or you can also use these buttons to switch songs. So, that's about it for the pattern editor. Everything else is pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And I hope this guide is helping you out a little bit.